John chapter 12. While you're turning there, I just want to go. Uh, preacher, you're going to be in Revelation 17 today, tonight. Lord willing, we'll see. Well, I wanted to read a verse from Revelation 17. You stay in John 12. Uh, Revelation 17 and verse 14. Just a few words of this verse uh, getting us ready for uh, what, what we'll see in John chapter 12. It says this, uh, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And then uh, this phrase right here is going to lead us into John chapter uh, 12. John chapter 12. And they that are with him and they that are with him. Let's go back to John chapter 12. I'll read a few verses and get into the message and I'll get out of here real quick. It says this, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and get given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief." and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then Jesus said, Let her alone against the day of my burying. Hath she kept this? And then verse 8, For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. And it will finish in verse 9, Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. I got a question. Have you ever felt the presence of God in your life? Have you ever felt the presence of God? I wonder, you know, here, uh, I imagine it won't be very long from today that we will experience the presence of God like we've never experienced the presence of God. And that is when we are with him literally uh, and physically in our glorified bodies, worshiping at his feet. I wonder what it'll be like when we are with him. You know what, like, like the song said, we, we just catch a glimpse uh, of what heaven is going to be like in, the, in this life. We, we just catch a glimpse of what the presence of God is like here on this, this earth. I wonder what it'll be like when we are with him. So, so uh, as we get into this, uh, the, that short phrase from Revelation is just going to be the, the title of the message today, and that is, they that are with him. They that are with him. So let's just look at a few characters from this passage and uh, see, see what they are like in the presence of Jesus. First off, we see in verses 2 and 3, we see the Marys and Marthas. And you know what? Some of these, these are, these are hard to come by sometimes. I think Martha gets a pretty bad rap sometimes because she's working and working and working. And uh, that's true. But you know what she was doing? She was working and working and working. She was serving the Lord. She was always serving the Lord. She was a servant. And I think that Martha uh, is a picture of proper service. She was serving. She was always serving the food at the, at the table. She was always getting things prepared. But then we see Mary, right? We see Mary, and we see that Mary is a picture of a proper spirit. She loved to worship the Lord. Here in this passage of Scripture, we see that she took something that was very costly to her, something very expensive, and she anointed the feet of Jesus and she wiped her, her, his feet with her hair. She was worshiping at his feet. That what Jesus said is, is he said, let her alone against the day of my burying. Hath she kept this? She had something in her possession that she was, she was going to use for Jesus. Can, is there anybody that can say that about their lives right now? Is there anything that you have in your possession that you're preparing to use for the Lord? 
Yeah, I see that Mary and, the Marys and Marthas is kind of a, a combination of, of the service, the work that we should put in for our Lord, but also the worship and the spirit that we ought to have for our Lord. But we see a few other people. So we see the Marys and the Marthas. Next, we see the manipulators. And, and he's very uh, big in this passage. It says, Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, he said, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? You know, I see this manipulator here, and we see them all, all around. They're in, our, they're, they're in the world. You know what? They're in our churches sometimes. They, they, like, to, they like to target people. I see that, that Judas here, what was he doing? He was targeting Mary. And even though he was targeting Mary, you know who he was actually targeting? He wasn't targeting Mary. He was tar targeting Christ. Because she gave what was hers, she gave it to the Lord. And so he was targeting uh, Jesus by targeting Mary. But also see that he was tracing. You know, when a, a little kid, I, I think about Wesley, he's getting ready to get to the point where he can, uh, uh, we haven't taught him yet, but they're like write letters and stuff. And so I, I'm looking ahead and, and looking uh, for when he's going to be able to trace letters, right? He's just, he's just tracing letters, trying to get it right. You know what? That's what Judas was doing here. He was just tracing a story. It wasn't a letter, but he was tracing a story where he could fall back, where he had the target, and he was, he was point, uh, pointing at the target, but he, was, he could trace it back. Oh, it's not going to be for me. This money is not going to be for me, but it's going to be for the poor, right? But then the truth comes out about this manipulator. It says, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And had the bag and bear what was put therein. So we see the Marys and the Marthas, the one that work, the ones that work, and the one that worship the Lord. We also see the manipulators, the one that tried to, to use the Lord for their own gain. But you know, there, there's a few other people in this passage. There is someone in verse verses 1 and 2, and his name was Lazarus. And you know what he was? He was a miracle. He was, he was just an absolute miracle, right? We see that he was dead. And what did Jesus do? He raised him from the dead and gave him life. I, I've, all, I've often wondered what Lazarus was thinking. Not just the day that he, he was raised from the dead, but days following. Like, like what, what do you do for four days? I, I believe that his body was corrupting. That it was doing what the, 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 the body does. Now, when Jesus was dead, his body was not corrupting and that sort of thing. But we, I, I believe that Lazarus, his body was corrupting and his, his skin was probably beginning to fall off. Martha herself said, hey, he, he's stinking by now. He stinketh, right? And his body was corrupting. But then the, the breath of life was breathed into his life. And God said, Jesus himself said, Lazarus, come forth. And we find in just the chapter before, in John chapter 11, that Jesus said, uh, Lazarus, come forth. And then what did he say? Loose him and let him go. Why? Because he was dead, but now he's alive. And that is a miracle. And you know what? In our physical bodies, we, we may not experience so many miracles. There's not, there's not millions and billions of people that, that recover from cancer. I thank God that there are that there's miracles in this life. You know what? There's miracles physically in this, in this auditorium right now. But not everybody is a miracle. But you know what? If you're saved, you have a spiritual miracle that has taken place. That you were once dead and you were, you were given new life. You become a new creature. But I want to focus in just for the next few moments. Not real quick, just a minute or two. We've seen the Marys and the Marthas. We've seen the manipulators. We've, seen, we've even seen the miracles in this story. But I want you to look at verse number 9. It says this, Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he, talking about Jesus, was there. And they came not uh, for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. And just for this last minute, I just want to preach on, you know what? Most of us are probably in this category. We're the much people. We're the many people. 
that just want to come see Jesus, that just want to see, come and see what God can do. You know, they wanted to come see Jesus. It says they didn't just want to come just to see Jesus, but they wanted to come see Lazarus. They wanted to see this man that was dead, and now he's alive. I see that the many wanted to be in the presence of the Messiah, and they wanted to be in the presence of the miracle. So I see they that are with him. And I wonder which category you might fall under in, in this, this passage. Are you a Mary, a Martha? Are you working? Are you serving? Uh, as, uh, are you worshiping unlike anybody else in the story? I sure hope that you're not like Judas, the manipulator that's just trying to, to gain uh, popularity and, and, and money for yourself. Maybe you're Lazarus. Maybe you're a miracle. But I'd say there's probably a lot of us. I would say myself included, that are just part of the much people. They wanted to be in the presence of the Messiah. They wanted to see what God could do. They that are with him.